Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site. BettingAngle.us, a free site. It is the Monday after Udenis Ugas' successful defense of his WBA welterweight title over clear upcoming future Hall of Famer, one of the all-time greats, Manny Pacquiao. Let's talk about that fight, folks. It's a stunning fight. What I want people right now to do is to imagine an opponent facing them. Right? You're looking at the opponent who's facing you. Now, just imagine this opponent is a southpaw with a Hall of Fame. Straight left hand. Right? Just imagine the angle at which that straight left hand is going to come. Now, just imagine that the guy facing you has the power of Manny Pacquiao, has the chaos of Manny Pacquiao, has the suddenness, the timing of Manny Pacquiao, and, of course, is blessed with Manny Pacquiao's hand speed. In other words, even if you block that straight left, you would imagine Pacquiao could riddle you with the rest of the combination. Right? You block the first punch. Guess what? Pacquiao has hand speed. Suddenly you're seeing right hands. You're seeing movement. He's bouncing to the side, opening up new angles. You're in trouble. Now, early in this fight, you have something that blew me away. My assumption was that Pacquiao throwing a straight left, right? The left would be caddy corner to my left if he's facing me. My assumption was that given Pacquiao's speed, given his unorthodoxy, I thought that Ugas would have to park his right hand for defensive purposes. Right? He finds out a few days ago he's facing a southpaw. There's surprise from both fighters, right? They have new opponents. Given how fast Pacquiao is, given how flush Pacquiao has landed on some opponents, I thought, wow, priority number one for Ugas has to be to defend himself from that straight left. I thought, clearly, that's going to take his right hand out of the picture. Because who could have his right hand dangling? Or who could be throwing his right hand, leaving himself unprotected on that side of his body against a guy with an A-plus straight left? Well, folks, it's a tribute to Ugas, who wins this fight by outthinking Manny Pacquiao. Right? He doesn't have the hand speed advantage. I know there are stories about Pacquiao having cramps, just to understand, Ugas doesn't have the foot speed advantage. He's not the harder puncher in the fight. Right? I believe Pacquiao has more than twice as many KOs as Ugas. Now, Ugas wins this fight because of strategy. It's because the people who he's with, his team and him, looking at film, reached the conclusion that Ugas does better against southpaws than righties. So incredibly, and folks, this is a jaw dropper. From the early rounds, Ugas starts throwing a right hand to Pacquiao's body. Not the left I expected, the right hand. I thought, surely, surely, Pacquiao is going to time this. Surely Pacquiao is going to figure out how to get Ugas's right hand out of the picture. Right? He could be throwing to Pacquiao's body. You thought surely Pacquiao is going to hesitate that left hand and then come in and land flush on Ugas, who is a defensive wizard. Folks, it didn't happen for several rounds. 
let's just say Ugas is doing things that I believe most opponents would be afraid to do against Manny Pacquiao. Maybe the wrinkle here is that Ugas had the timing down from early. Right, I believe Ugas wins arguably three of the first four rounds. He certainly wins at least two of the first four rounds against a quick starter in Manny Pacquiao. And he's taking risks. The risks include throwing his right hand to Pacquiao's body. Let me say this too, because I need to have people recognize greatness. You know, I know many of you are upset. You don't feel it was a fair fight. That Floyd Mayweather beat Manny Pacquiao earlier. Right? The argument is that Floyd ran too much. Right? Floyd is using lateral movement that Ugas doesn't use. Well, let me just say this. You know, Floyd's lateral movement was brilliant because it cut Pacquiao's volume. It had Pacquiao guessing where Floyd was going to be. I would argue, and I know the scorecards in this fight showed a comfortable Ugas victory. Right? But I would argue the Floyd fight was more certain going into the 11th and 12th rounds. Floyd had beaten Pacquiao. Well, here you have a completely different fight, and it's a stunner. You have a guy beating Pacquiao from the pocket. Right? Ugas isn't even looking for Pacquiao. Ugas is waiting for Pacquiao to come in the pocket early in the fight. It's later in the fight that you start to notice Ugas throwing that right hand, and I believe that's the punch of the fight, his right, not the left as I thought in the pre-fight video. It's his right hand. You'll notice Ugas starting to hit Pacquiao in the face with that right hand. Let's also talk about styles. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Pacquiao has great legs. Now he does get slowed down here by Ugas, right? Ugas hits him with several body shots early. So not surprisingly, guess what? Those ribs start to hurt, the body starts to hurt. Pacquiao can't move that well. The second half of the fight when Ugas pulls away. Right, but just understand, Pacquiao, who is excellent at jumping in and throwing combinations, jumping in with a big straight left hand, and of course flurrying behind it, engaging. But what Pacquiao doesn't do that well, I know this next line is going to be controversial, is to get on his back foot. He's fighting a guy who is tethered to the pocket, right? Ugas wants a pocket. This is the guy who is a chess player who wants a pocket. This is not Demetrius Andre, who's moving around, doesn't want the pocket to form. Here you have, against some of the fastest hands I've ever seen, you actually have a counterpuncher who has a construct, right? In the pocket, he knows how to defend himself. In the pocket, he can hit you to the body. That's a key part of his game. In the pocket, he knows. You throw this, I throw that. He has his hands here, right? Pacquiao tries to throw straight lefts. But Ugas has them blocked with his hands. Then is the kind of counterpuncher who, of course, can move a little bit to the side and come back with his own shots. Because he wants to hit Pacquiao in the body, he needs Pacquiao in the pocket. What Pacquiao doesn't do well 
is that we'll call it Lomachenko. Step back. Right? He's not a guy. Ali Liston. Someone said I always mention Ali in videos. Let me keep that streak going. Ali Liston. Right? What Pacquiao can't do is against a guy with a construct. Think Teofimo Lopez. Think Sonny Liston. Right? A guy who loves the pocket. Right? A guy who wants to beat you up, up close. Right? Who wants to hit you with a jab. That Ugas jab was masterful. And then beat you up in the pocket. What Pacquiao doesn't have, and Ugas charged him for it, was the ability to just step back. Back away from the construct. Let Ugas understand, player, you're going to have to find me here. This construct you have. Where I jump in the pocket, you block my shot, then I'm getting hit in the ribs with a wicked right hook to the ribs. Or I'm getting countered. Look at Manny's face after this fight. You don't see Manny that beaten up that often. I'm getting countered to the face. When I get inside, I jump inside, you have a jab ready for me. Just to understand there's a whole part of the game. It didn't work on the scorecards for Lomachenko. But there's a whole part of the game where a fighter says, look, I know you want me in the pocket. I'm not going to be in the pocket. I'm going to be fluid. I'm going to be on my back foot. You're going to have to come find me. You want to hit me in the body, you're going to have to reach for my body. Right? You're not going to be able to get comfortable, have plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. Right? Because that's what Ugas had. He has his hands up here. Pacquiao jumps in. Ugas knows. Block the straight left. I'm going to come back with a left hook. I'm going to come back to, with a right hook to the body. Or, here's Pacquiao coming in again. Here's my jab. Walk into my jab. Then, as you're hit with my jab, and I understand you're at the end of my jab, so you don't have momentum to throw that straight left hand, I'm going to hit you in the body with my right hand. Understand how masterful Ugas is. Against one of the fastest fighters in the sport today, Ugas is landing right hands to the body against Manny Pacquiao. And he's not paying for it by taking brutal combinations up top. In other words, he has the timing, he has the sequence down. So Pacquiao comes in, Pacquiao's making an effort, folks. There are rounds here where Pacquiao's throwing volume. Pacquiao comes in, Pacquiao's throwing punches. Ugas has the sequence down where he's like, okay, I've blocked this. Pacquiao can't come back with that left hand. Bang, to the body. Right, or I've blocked this. Guess what? Pacquiao can't block my right hand. I believe Pacquiao was stunned that Ugas was throwing the right hand as much as he was. Then, of course, you get to the last four rounds of the fight, and folks, look at the film. Ugas' right hand takes over. Right? Pacquiao might think his legs were cramping up. Were his legs cramping up from the second round? Or was Pacquiao feeling his legs after getting hit with so many body shots? Right? So, I don't think Pacquiao did that badly. But I think Pacquiao has a problem with clever counterpunchers, sequence type guys. Right? Think about some of the guys who've beaten him. Marquez, very clever counterpuncher who wanted you in the pocket. Right? Marquez fights Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather decides to not stay in the pocket. I want people to look at that fight. 
Mayweather's moving around. Mayweather's showing lateral movement, which neither guy showed in this Ugas Pacquiao fight. Right? Mayweather's circling Marquez. Mayweather's far outside on Marquez at times and stays there. Then you notice that Marquez, when he's forced to move, when he doesn't have the defined pocket to work with, has problems. Well, think about the last Marquez Pacquiao fight. That's the definitive fight where Pacquiao gets beaten. Right? That's the fight where Marquez knocks Pacquiao down. Then Pacquiao gets off the canvas. The fight continues. And you notice Marquez is just waiting for Pacquiao to jump in, miss with the left. Marquez has the right hand ready. That's when Pacquiao gets knocked out cold, right? That's the definitive victory over Manny Pacquiao. But understand, Marquez is setting traps. The point I'm making here is Pacquiao is not the fighter who, a guy like Marquez is setting traps in the pocket. I'm guessing a Lomachenko would then take a step back, right? Would look at you and Ali would dance away. Right? The idea is, hey, player, you think we're going to have a pocket? You think you can set a trap for me because I'm going to go where you want me to go? Right here, Pacquiao's lack of that kind of back foot game cost him. Ugas, the entire fight, knows Pacquiao's going to jump inside. When Pacquiao jumps inside, guess what? He's dealing with a defensive wizard. I know some of you disagreed in the comment section of the earlier video. Folks, look how high Ugas' hands are. Who else leans in the pocket against Manny Pacquiao like this? How is Ugas against Pacquiao able to start fast with him, win at least two of the first four rounds? Not get hit hard in the head. Not looked overwhelmed by Pacquiao's speed. Worse yet, who against Manny Pacquiao was able to throw right hands to the body? I mean, come on. That's outrageous. Ugas is able to go to the body from early. And he's able to do so with the hand that lines up against Manny Pacquiao's left. Right, so this fight had surprises. As I said in the pre-fight video, I thought this was a bad style matchup for Pacquiao. Right, understand, this played into Ugas' hands. Manny's a lead puncher for most of the fight. Ugas, of course, is your prototypical counterpuncher. Now, had Manny fought Errol Spence, I'm guessing both guys would have been trying to lead. It would have been rough and tumble. Manny wouldn't have stepped in as many traps as he did here. I don't think Spence would have invested as much in Manny's body as Ugas did. I don't think Spence would have had his hands up at all times. I think Spence would have thought, I'm alpha here. This is a little guy. I'm the bigger man. I can roughhouse this guy. Folks, I'm just telling you that Manny Pacquiao has feasted off opponents like that. It's the guys who come in who try to impose themselves on Manny. Antonio Margarito, one of Manny's bigger opponents, who Manny is able to make pay. Right? The guy is there and he's trying to land his own shots. Manny wants to be able to bounce, wants to be able to trade with guys who think they're alpha. Ricky Hatton. Right? Ricky's in there trying to throw punches and stuff. Here he's dealing with a chess player. Right? Ugas, 
Ugas is standing in the pocket. He's all right with Pacquiao being the one jumping in the pocket. Then when Pacquiao jumps in the pocket, oh, here's a surprise. Oh, got this shot blocked. Think about it. You're going to see several times. Look at the film. Several times. Pacquiao throws a straight left. And Ugas has it blocked here. Right? Ugas always has his hands like this. Do you think Ugas would be able to keep his hands here had Pacquiao taken a step back? No, Pacquiao's always coming forward, folks. He plays into Ugas's hands just like he plays into Marquez's hands. He walks into Ugas's jab just like he walked into controversial fight Timothy Bradley's jab, the first fight. Right? Ugas is able to fight small against one of the fastest guys in the sport. Ugas is leaned over. Ugas is throwing uppercuts. Some of Ugas's punches aren't even short. Ugas seems to be reaching back to throw some of these left hooks. And it worked out for him. Pacquiao clearly is not moving well the second half of the fight. Pacquiao's offense is clearly getting blocked by Ugas. Ugas is landing the higher percentage of power shots. Right? This was a bad style matchup, coupled with the fact that Manny thought he was fighting a righty. Excuse me. Manny thought he was fighting a lefty until less than two weeks before this fight. Right? I believe Manny, if he wants to come back, has several great fights he can fight. Several. By chance, he picked one of the worst possible opponents he could go up against. And that opponent was ready for him. I want people to Google Ishmael Salas' comments before the fight on Ugas against Southpaws. Right? Understand, Ugas is a technician. Against Sean Porter, it's that left hand that continually is finding a home against Porter's body early. And then, just like this fight, just like this fight, in the last third of the Sean Porter fight, you'll notice Uga starts loading up with that right hand. Well, here, Uga is loading up with that right hand earlier than he did in the Sean Porter fight. And here, and it's a tip-off, Uga is landing that right hand. Understand, Uga, right, is comfortable. He solves Pacquiao's timing early. You know that by just watching his right hand early. Who throws a right hand early against Manny Pacquiao? Like this. He's not even throwing a straight right hand, folks. He's hooking the right hand to Manny's body. Let me say this too. Pacquiao makes a mistake. Pacquiao could have done much better in this fight. He's the shorter fighter. Why is Ugas the only one throwing body shots? Right? Pacquiao should have come in like Mike Tyson. Right? Pacquiao has the bounce. He should have pivoted lower and should have said, okay, fine. I know you're coming at me with this right hook to the body. Player, there's a price. I'm coming after your body too. And I can get lower than you because I'm the smaller guy. Right? He didn't do that. He didn't do that Mike Tyson, Jack Dempsey type fighting. Right? Manny doesn't go to Ugas's body. Maybe Manny didn't realize how good defensively Ugas is at hiding his head. Let me say this too. Boxing's a nuanced sport. You'll notice Ugas has his hands up to hide his head. But you'll notice, too, when Ugas is throwing punches, Ugas knows to move his head. 
Ugas is always conscious of his head's positioning. Right? He never gets so carried away where he's just wide open and unprepared for a Pacquiao shot. So let me just say, this fight gets a wow. Outstanding performance from Ugas. Ugas wants to unify at 147. Hey, player, be careful what you wish for. Right? Maybe you need to look at that last virtual Ortiz fight. Maybe you need to realize that we've been looking at Sean Porter and Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence. Maybe, maybe we should also be looking at Jaron Ennis. Maybe the new generation is already in the building armed and dangerous. Right? So Ugas wants to unify. I give him credit. But he was the perfect opponent for Manny Pacquiao. This was really a setup. In other words, you knew Ugas was dangerous, then suddenly they told you, guess what? Ugas is Pacquiao's new opponent. And you understood that while everyone was smiling at press conferences and stuff like that, you understood that the new opponent was a dangerous opponent. I congratulate Ugas on defending his belt. Understand, this is a guy who was in the Olympics in 2008. Folks, he's not new. He's been world-class for several years. Right? I know he lost some matches early in his career. Not so much later in his career. Right? I thought he beat Sean Porter. Right? So... This guy was ready for Pacquiao. He had just faced Sean Porter, who is sudden like Manny Pacquiao, who's shorter like Manny Pacquiao, who's episodic like Manny Pacquiao, right? And Ugas was there because of his defense. Ugas was 100% more alert than Sean Porter in the later rounds. Here, you notice, you're hearing stories explaining why Manny couldn't move as well in the later rounds. Folks, there's never a round in this fight where Manny Pacquiao doesn't have the foot speed advantage on Ugas. Right? Manny is the better athlete from start to finish. He is. But he's out thought from start to finish. How else can you explain Ugas landing right hands to Manny's body? Think about that person's facing you. Your right hand is down here on the guy's body. Look how unprotected your head is. Did you see Ugas going like this a lot? I didn't. No, Ugas has the sequence down where he knew when he threw that right hand to the body, Manny was not in a position to throw the straight left. Ugas knew it. That's the fight, folks. Ugas outthinks Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao's going to look at the film and he's going to ask himself, why didn't I go to the body? He's going to ask himself, why didn't I play games with the timing? On my straight left, why didn't I come up like I was going to throw the straight left and then just take another step back, regroup, faint, throw the left then? Why didn't I use lateral movement? Why did I allow a pocket to form and then to stay there? Right, Pacquiao was prepared for Spence. He wasn't prepared for Ugas. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.